Welcome to another lesson for writing task one of the academic IELTS exam. And in this lesson, I'm going to share with you the best strategy for dealing with maps when it comes to writing task one. So very often you're given uh, two maps to look at from different periods of time and you're asked to describe both maps and the differences between them and to make comparisons. So let's get started on how we can handle these types of questions in writing task one. So first of all, you wanna take a good look at the question and the task that you have to achieve. And in this case, it says the maps Below show the village of Stokeford in 1930 and 2010. So you want to analyze the question, and then it tells you what your task is with these maps. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So here's your task. First of all, identify the main features. And then you'll be asked to write an introduction You'll write an overview of the maps, and then you'll write uh, details in the paragraphs about each map and make comparisons where relevant. So overall, your essay will have four paragraphs. Paragraph one will be the introduction. Paragraph two will be your overview of both maps. Paragraph three will be where you pick out your first main feature and describe it and compare it. And paragraph four will be where you choose your second main feature. When it comes to choosing the features that you're going to write about, you will not write about every little detail of each map. What you will do is you'll choose and identify the main features that are most relevant to write about, but again, you don't want to have any more than four paragraphs. And if you have these four paragraphs, you'll have no problem writing 150 words in the 20 minutes that you're given. The biggest danger in writing task one is that you write too much. So it's very important to choose, to pick and choose what you're going to write about and make sure you don't write any more than these four paragraphs. And you won't have any trouble writing 150 words. And you want to try and avoid go going over by too much, by going uh, over 200 words. Uh, ideally, you'll want to stay in between 150 and 200 words, and you should be able to accomplish this quite easily with the right strategy and the right approach. So as you begin to analyze the question, uh, in sentence one, you see that you need a brief description of the graphic, and then you're given your instructions, your task, the, to write those four paragraphs, and then you're given the chart. So this is what you'll see on the question page for writing task one. And then your task is to select the main features, write about the main features and compare the main features. This is a threefold task and this is all that you're asked to do. You're not asked to give your opinion. You're not asked to give any reasons for why things have changed between the two maps or a reason for the details, all you're asked to do is to report and summarize and compare. So as you look at the maps, what you want to do is start identifying the key parts that you may want to write about. And so this is where you're going to take note paper that you're given and start preparing the content and the outline for your essay. So when you have two maps like this, you'll usually first of all want to identify the time periods. Now it could be that you're dealing with the present 
and the past. In this case, you're dealing with two maps that are in the past. You may be dealing with a, a map that's in the present or the future, but the main thing is to identify the time periods and how you will be comparing them. And this will determine how you write about them. If you'll be, if you're writing about the future, then you're going to be using your your grammar in the future tense. If you're writing in the past, you're going to be using the past tense. And then, as you look at these maps between the two time periods, you're going to want to notice the difference. What features have disappeared? What new features are there in the second map? And then, thirdly, you're going to want to look at what features have remained the same over both maps. So as you look at the maps and you identify this key information, this is how you'll decide what to write on. As you're dealing with maps, when it comes to a little vocabulary tip, you're going to want to be thinking about a directional uh, language, north and south, east and west. Usually when you have a map and you can see on these maps, there is a compass on the map to tell you which way is north and south. And then in between north and south, you have and east and west, you have northeast, northwest, southeast. And so, so just be aware that your vocabulary will include some of this directional language. And then if we look at these two maps, we've chosen four main features. Again, you want to be very careful that you don't write about too many things and too many details. And I would say that uh, when it comes to identifying the main features, you don't want to have any more than four. So as you look at your notes, the things that you've identified, pick out the three or four that seem to be the most important. So, for example, in this case, uh, we have uh, a feature about the farmland and the farmland has been built on. We have some key structures that we can identify in the map. In one, uh, there's a large house, but in the second one, it's been converted into a retirement home. In both maps, we have a school, but over time, in the second map, we can see that the school has been, has been enlarged. And when we look at the second map, we can see that a feature of the first map has disappeared altogether, and those are that the shops have disappeared. So we've narrowed it down to four main features that we want to deal with as we write our essay. So we're going to begin with paragraph number one, which is an introduction. And the introduction is very simple and easy to write. Uh, the exact description that we were given in our question it was this. The maps below show the village of Stokeford in 1930 and 2010. So all we want to do is to rephrase this question in our own words if we want to add a little extra, that's okay. But our, our introduction is going to be very brief. It's not even going to be what seems like a full paragraph. And if we rephrase this sentence in our own words, it might look like something like this. The two maps illustrate how the village of Stokeford, situated on the east bank of the River Stoke, we take that detail from, our, from both maps, changed over an 80-year period from 1930 to 2010. So all we've done is really taken the question, rephrased it, expanded it a little, and we have uh, a very brief one-sentence introduction to our essay. Once our introduction is complete, then we move on to paragraph two. And this is simply where we think about both maps together, the four main features that we've identified, and we give an overview or a summary of the entire essay and a summary of both maps. There was a considerable development of the settlement over these years. So we're saying that there has been a change. 
and it was gradually transformed from a small rural village into a largely residential area. So it's gone from farmland to housing. And we've just explained this again. Our second paragraph is not very long. Again, it won't be difficult to write enough words. And this is our summary of both maps and an overview that we put in paragraph two. When it comes to paragraph three, we're going to have um, uh, a description bringing in two of the four main features that we identified. And in paragraph three, we're going to just talk about the change in the presence of housing. Okay, there are other changes, but in this case, we are dealing with the increase in housing. So we're just saying the presence of housing in 2010 compared to farmland back in 1930. New roads were constructed, residential properties were built in response to the incredible increase in population. And mentioned briefly that the primary school was extended to around double the size of the previous building. So we've taken two of the main features that we identified and we've put them into one paragraph and suggested overall that uh, and talked about the change between farmland to residential land. So this paragraph, like all paragraphs, really only has one topic, and that's the change from farmland to residential and what's included in that. And that's all we want for our third paragraph. And then we come to the fourth paragraph, and then we can talk about some of the things that don't exist in the second map. So uh, the post office remained, but the two shops have disappeared that we had in 1930, and they don't exist in 2010. They've been replaced by uh, houses. There used to be uh, extensive property in its own, and this has also been uh, replaced with residences. And the, the, former, uh, the former large house that was in 1930 has been converted into a retirement home, another significant transformation for the village. And so the, we've dealt with two of the other main features that we've identified. So it's very important as you're writing, again, pick out the main features, divide them into your two detailed paragraphs, and that's all. There are a lot of things that are a part of these maps that we haven't dealt with, but we've given uh, details about the main features, and this is the task that we're given for writing task one. And as we put it all together, we have our entire essay. And you can see that uh, if you were to count the words, and it's not necessary, because if you use the right structure and identify the main features and only write about them, you will not write too much. And this essay turns out to be about uh, between 180 and 190 words, which is perfect to get the score you need on IELTS Writing Task 1. I hope you found this helpful, and I want to wish you all the best as you continue to prepare for the IELTS exam.